when people speak about hedge funds, everyone talks about statistics, strategies, quantitative analysis, sharp ratio, Sortino ratio, the Lou ratio, whatever it might be. I love it. I mean, it's like Moneyball. I'll talk about Moneyball at one point also. Um, but I think there's one, I think everyone gets something wrong, which is hedge fund strategies, though they sound sexy and sophisticated, I really think it's about people. This is the result of 20 years of hedge fund letters from managers. Thousands of pages, and it's on that introduction that I'm very excited to share with you hedge speak, the good, the bad, and the ugly on hedge fund investing. You know, people argue about regulation, but the truth is, and as I go through some of these slides, you're going to see there was probably a need for the industry to be structured and or to be sort of looked at by the regulators. Because to a certain degree, the Fed, and this is a, an important discussion, and Woody Brock talks about it often, the Fed absolutely lost control of the capital markets over the last 10, if not 15 years since Glass-Steagall. So the reality was hedge funds were something that the Fed never looked at. Fortunately now, since 2008, they're starting to look at it. Now, it's kind of funny because Roosevelt said, nothing to fear but fear itself. But when it comes to managing money, or if you're working with B, or working with a successful leader and managing money, you want to be fearful. Because if you're not fearful, you run the risk of losing a lot of money. Okay, who could tell me what happened in August of 1998? Russia default. Yay. Russia default, markets plummeted, merger arbitrage got destroyed because suddenly deals that were supposed to close did not close, spreads widened, people had leverage, everyone lost a boatload of money in August. This poor schnook in July, late June, terminated his hedge, took off his hedge. Now you could say he's a lousy manager, that could have done really well if he kept the hedge on. The reality is it's about people. Why did he take his hedge off? I'll tell you why he took his hedge off. Because for the prior six months, every time guys like me or Professor Liu or any of you who would go in to see him would say, dude, your, your returns, we love you, but your returns are too low. And he would then say, yeah, but I'm running a hedge. I'm running a very hedged book. I'm worried about the market. I'm worried about the environment. Well, you know what? If you don't increase your returns, we will redeem. Because that's the way this industry works. We all want to make money. So he, as a person, knowing, and it's very hard to deal with that, you know, it's sort of like the devil and the, the angel on your shoulder saying, what do I do, what do I do? The guy eventually decided, you know what, it's costing me too much money, this hedge, I'm going to get rid of it. And he got absolutely destroyed the following month, but now he had to go back to same investors who were threatening to redeem, who are now going to redeem because they lost a lot of money, when they probably wouldn't have lost any money, it would have been a stock. One month. Could have been, should have, could have. I mean, it's, and, and, and that's a message for all of you. Do you stick to your guns? Or do you listen? And at what point are you listening to the stock market? And if you invested um, in the hot issue class, you were up 50% a year. If you invested in the restricted class, you were up about 8%. The manager who ran that hedge fund, you would ask him how he makes money. He goes, I'm a stock picker. That manager then went to run another hedge fund, which never made any money, and now he's running another hedge fund, investing in commodities. When I interview people, I would say, how's the manager cheap? This, the hot issue would be one of the ways. Private, you know, just, because I was looking to find people who have that, that cynical look, and it's the same thing. How do you make money? What's an edge? What's, what's unusual? How are you going to beat everyone else out there on the street? What is your edge? How are you going to do it? He's a good guy. It's someone I care for that I like. Now, if he was to invest in a lot of privates, I wouldn't like him as much. But the reality is, through the letter, it's about people. I like the way this guy thinks. I like the way he communicates. He's reasonable. He's an activist. He gets involved. He thinks out of the box. And guess what? She had a baby. We all know she had a baby. We're partners. I feel like I'm part of the family. 
and I'm willing to lose money with this guy. And even better, he actually put in place a maternity policy. Think about it. There's no, you know, who has a maternity policy in a hedge fund? Because he never had it before. But he, he's like, okay, it's, she had a baby. It's the first baby we've had. We've now got, you know, we're going to grow this family, but we need to have a policy. And he, and he figured out a way to, um, to do it. Hedge fund manager, you've got to transform yourself from a successful prop trader and become a risk manager. You've got to become a marketer, a fundraiser, an administrator, a manager of people, an accountant, and guess what? Very few do. You all own a hedge fund. You've got, every one of you, 20 employees working for you, 10 of which trade nonstop. All 10 have their cell phones on the desk. All 10 have lines that may be taped, may not be taped. If any of them are doing insider trading, how are you going to catch them? You could go to jail and lose your entire business and go home to your wife and explain why you suddenly have lost your business of trust. So think about this letter for a second. You think he's a crook. I do. In this case, I actually know he is probably a crook. But, and that's why a lot of guys are closing down. It's, it's hard. Business is disappearing. Um, industry is changing. You need to all be focused on where the industry is going, what the next trend is, what the industry is going to look like in five years from now, ten years from now. Suddenly, we're in a very, very good recovery. Then add that to the dollar and <coughs> other depreciation currencies. That could be really bullish. And what I'm getting at is when, when you look at the hedge fund industry or you look at the financial industry, you look at our political system, Things change. People change. Things happen. No one forecasts the Arab Spring. Maybe this will be the U.S. Spring come January and February. It's suddenly something will bring about hope that allow people to see a different outcome, which would be great for the markets and be a great result for our, um, our capital. So bottom line, you're the leaders. Watch, listen carefully, and be part of that change. Thanks, guys.